No raindrops. Lane Forsythe to lead things off for Oklahoma State. Florida is the designated home team here for game number seven. And the first pitch to Forsythe is in on his buttons. Senior from Jackson, Tennessee. Forsythe's been in the leadoff spot all weekend. And I've seen the ball real well, just one for 12. But he has drawn five walks. Three and oh. Linus Baker has the plate. His last two look pretty good. We saw Baker behind the plate a couple of days ago. It was a tight zone, but it was a fair zone, it seems. Right down Hall of Fame drive with that one, three and one. Right back at it, three and two after the fastball, 95. Clemente's payoff. And he walks the leadoff man, Lane Forsyth. Gets the crowd into it early. And you got the old Carson Benge, who was on the mound last night for Oklahoma State. Went 0 for 4 at the plate. One of the best two-way players in the country. And he made some defensive plays that you just don't oh. see pitchers make. Two of them. Kevin O'Sullivan was talking about it in his post-game press conference last night. Runs a fastball inside, nothing in one. Ben Shu, there are discussions as to whether he goes to the back end of the first round. Won't be as a pitcher first, it's more as a position player first. One on one. 36 average with 18 home runs. Including a home run this week. Alan McDaniel has him a top 30 draft prospect. One and two. I thought Josh's answer about him when we interviewed him in game yesterday was a great descriptor. This guy plays the game like a 12 year old on a Saturday. You'd like to have a few of those. To just go play somewhere, and, and I know you're going to be pretty good at it. Binge goes down swinging. Down with the breaking ball up in the zone, one down. It's kind of a backup, not exactly where you want to throw it, but it worked out pretty well. And, and this is like, this isn't the hanging breaking ball. The hanging breaking ball is the one that comes back belt high that you have a chance. When it stays here and it's elevated at the letters, guys, they don't see that pitch very often. And so rarely do they hit it. Bench just kind of pulled the trigger on one that you can't get to. and. It, Goes as the first strike out of the day for Clemente. And here's Nolan Schubert, the best power hitter and one of the best power hitting teams in the country. Oklahoma State, eighth in the nation with 118 home runs, and he was swinging for number 24 with that cut. Tell you what, you want to see something early with Clemente, and the thing you're not sure about when you throw a, a redshirt freshman out there is how aggressive are they going to be. It's been aggressive so far. He's not afraid to throw the fastball. Schubert's homer three times this weekend. And lays off 94 and on the hands and up. Top of the zone. Three-time All-State player at Michigan was committed to Eric Backage of Michigan. Glad to come to Oklahoma State where he was the co-Big 12 freshman of the year. Forsythe 12 of 13 on the bases this year. One and two. Schubert's going to make a lot of American money next year in the draft. Just a sophomore, not eligible, obviously, this year. But I think between him and Jace Lavalette at Texas A&M, those are you two premier left-handed power hitters in the draft next year. He's hit a couple of long ones this weekend. This guy's this one behind the plate. Luke Heyman will track all the way to the screen. And he's got a play on it. 
Great job by Luke Heyman. So that ball was behind the screen until about the time it came down to the wire that holds that screen up because anything that's hit that high behind home plate when it spins down it's spinning back towards the plate. That's why all the catchers turn their back to the infield because the baseball's coming back to you. And for Heyman go find that net and this is not easy because you when it comes down to make clip the very top and it didn't miss it by much. But a good play, play by the catcher for the second out. Here's Zach Earhart at the plate and a pickoff attempt picked up by Caglione on a short hop. Earhart is six for his last 12. Of those six hits this week, he's got four doubles and two home runs. Junior from Tampa. OPS over 1,000, 14 home runs. Runner goes. The throw is there in time. The caught stealing to end the inning. Luke Heyman with the strike. Well, lead off walk to start this weekend, including a home run that started off this regional against Nebraska. And a little flare dumped into center field. And a leadoff single for Curlin. And that will bring the nation's best, if not hottest, hitters to the plate. And Jack Caglione with a runner on. Four hits in this regional, two of them home runs. Jack Caglione has a 45 game on base streak. Earlier this year, he had a 30 game hit streak. Got him off balance, pops it up to the right side. Avery Ortiz waits for it to come down. One down. Obviously as a pitcher you're hyper aware of where Schubert or Caglione would be within an order. You get that out is it a sense of relief or you still keep the same level of focus on the next guy. Ideally both. It's definitely a sense of relief because you don't have to see that guy anymore at least for now. Um, but at the same time you get to flip the switch very quick. The one thing and it's it's way early but two Florida hitters each have swung at the first pitch. Ashton Wilson at the plate. Not a bad idea to move Wilson to the three hole this week. Up, up. The bunt is popped up and handled by Doherty. Two down. We have seen some elite defensive plays over the course of this tournament already. A little bit surprised right here and and one of the toughest pitches to bond is off speed. This is a changeup or a slider. It was definitely off speed. That's the one a lot of times you see go straight up in the air because it's no different than a fastball. Timey gets off a little bit, the barrel drops, the ball goes straight up in the air. Makes for an easy play for Doherty. First pitch strike. First pitch to the previous three were all put into play. Foul by Shelton with Curlin aboard. <laughs> Shelton. 
Shelton goes down swinging, and that will close the first. And now Zach Earhart leads off the second, and he tattoos this one into the left field corner. It is off the fence on a short hop. Earhart motors the second base, and that's the first hit allowed by Jake Clemente. And it's got Oklahoma State knocking on the door here in the second. Earhart maybe had a little bit of an advantage was up last inning saw a few pitches then ultimately Forsyth was thrown out trying to steal this time gets a first pitch fastball 93 elevated that's 107 off the bat out to left field short hops the fence Cowboys in business here in the second with a leadoff double and the first pitch low to Aiden Miola. Miola has 10 home runs this season. The junior from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, nearly had his 11th in the first matchup with Florida, but it was called back due to fan interference. And oddly enough, we got fan interference calls in consecutive days here at this regional. Miola's dad, former soccer star, Tony, uh, stand up Tony Miola in the U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame. And Three-time World Cup goalie for the men's national team. They're heading the count 3-0. And that's a four-pitch walk. Just outside Aiden Miola. Second walk from Jake Clemente. Two on, nobody out. Ian Doherty coming up. And Kevin O'Sullivan coming out. For those who just joined us, walk through the pitching options for Florida over the course of this game. Uh, I mean, not ideal. I don't know if you'd say that for either one. So you got guys on both sides that have one start each the entire season. That's kind of what happens game seven of a regional as you get down. Now, Florida still has some pieces. I think the one thing to watch with Florida. This would be a bullpen day for Liam Peterson. It was a game one starter and was outstanding. Wouldn't shock me if you see him at the back end. If Florida has the lead or if at least it's tight. I don't think he goes more than probably 40 pitches at most and they're not going to use him early. Until then they're going to have to bridge it together with some guys that have been I would say mainstays in their bullpen but still not a comfortable day for either side. Doherty from down the road in Kingfisher, Oklahoma, has double digit home runs. He squares early and takes a strike. Nothing in one. 6 2, 212 junior. Whose dad, Derek, was drafted by the Mets out of Kingfisher High School in 95. Earhart at second, Miola at first, and that one tug. 1 1. Doherty is three for 11 this week with five strikeouts here at Obrey Stadium in Stillwater. The ball stays up. What's the winning run total today? I feel that high, man. I know the wind's blowing out to left center. Give me seven. Lower than I expected, actually. So we're going to miss two and two. Well, you didn't like my answer at the SEC tournament. When I gave you five. It was, that was like two months ago. It was four. You gave me an answer two games ago, and then an inning later, you hedged it. Good. Outside, full count. Doherty was dinged up early in the season, but the coaching staff and he worked hard to adjust the swing to just put the ball in play. Still held some of that power. And he goes down swinging here. That's a big strikeout for Jake Clemente. His second K, and there's one down. It's a big strikeout, especially because Doherty was squaring a bun at the beginning. And Oklahoma State initially was trying to give up a, an out but move everybody up. That doesn't work. Then he goes into swing mode. Doherty goes, or excuse me, Clemente goes back to work and gets a big strikeout. Now you get Brueggemann, who has big time power but also has a lot of swing and miss. 
Callum Brigham at 6'6, 235. It's from across the river from St. Louis in Smithton, Illinois. And the first pitch misses away, 1 0. Second team all conference is a DH in the Big 12 last year. Blowing in. He is two for 13 through three games with Oklahoma State this weekend. Those two hits, though, went for doubles, and he has driven in six. Two out of Brigham. Bounce straight back. So far in dead red fastball counts. When Oklahoma State has got them from Clemente, they haven't been able to square them up. The double to left was on a first pitch fastball that Earhart just jumped, but Clemente's fastball has been good so far. He has an uncommonly high whiff rate on the fastball. Heyman handles another two down. His whiff rate on the fastball is 29 percent. That is 11 points higher than the Division One average. Just Comparing to the big leaguers, it's seven percentage points higher than the MLB average. And it's not, you know, a five star 97 mile an hour fastball. Average velo 93. No, but it, it does have good carry. I mean, you, you'll see it stay at the top of the zone, and he can run it up. We've already seen to, to 95. The, the freshman's got really good stuff. Maybe Ortiz at the plate, 1 0. I mean, probably a kid when you look at him from Florida standpoint that ideally you push into the rotation next year even though he had just one start before this all year. Ortiz is just a freshman. He's at a Tulsa Union and he fouls one into the screen one on one. Pretty good week for the freshman in the eight hole. He's four for twelve. Cowboys and Gators split their previous meetings this weekend. Oklahoma State took the first. Florida took the second last night to force this game seven. One and two. Six yeah, on the outside black. I think he's juiced a little bit, huh? That would qualify. Trying to work out of trouble and line to Thomas at third. No runs after the leadoff double and two. Fun to see the talent from different parts of the country. Here's Luke Heyman. And other countries, I suppose. Those two That's have right. the most Canadians respectively on their rosters than any other teams. Here's sophomore from Longwood, Florida at a Lake Brantley High School. I mean, Molsky misses away. He's making just his second start of the season. Started in the Big 12 tournament last week. Spent two seasons playing at Penn State. He was primarily a starter there, especially his freshman year. A little bit more bullpen work as a sophomore before coming to Stillwater. What are the Cowboys hoping for from Molsky today? He went four and a third his last time out. That was his only start. If you could get that today, and that was in a Big 12 tournament, you get four plus. I think that's a really good day from Molsky. Cowboys bullpen a little bit more rested than Florida's. I mean, if you had to compare them right now, they're probably in a better spot. They just used Gabe Davis yesterday, who was phenomenal. Oh my gosh! When he came in, I mean, he he was lights out, unhittable. But that's it. So Davis is down. I would think everybody else in that Oklahoma State bullpen is ready to go today. In the two games against Florida, Oklahoma State has used a total of three pitchers. Brian Holiday with the. So that would be the last two days before this. But yeah. They've used three arms. Well, I think there's also an advantage in that Florida hasn't seen those guys. Gators might run some guys out that will have their second appearance. Against Oklahoma State this weekend. Here's Tyler Shellnut. He's a senior and he's having a big weekend and had a big night against Oklahoma State earlier. Doubled his first time up in their first matchup.
268 average and 13 home runs for Shellnut, but a team high 73 strikeouts. Rip foul past third base coach Taylor Black. Kind of a casual laid back Monday afternoon here that belies what's on the line for both of these programs. I felt that way when we got in the ballpark. Rains came through today. It's actually perfect right now. Flags aren't hardly moving in the low 70s. It was intense last night. Neely and Davis trying to match zeros out of the bullpen. Florida got a three run home run from Colby Shelton in the comeback win. The Gators have been a great comeback team all season long. That was their 16th comeback win. 12 of their 13 SEC wins were of the come from behind variety. Two balls and two strikes to Tyler Shellnut. Florida trying to go back to the Supers. They made it all the way to Omaha last year in the College World Series finals, lost in game three to LSU in a high scoring series. But should Florida win today and LSU win in Chapel Hill tonight, the SEC would get a record six in the Super Regionals. Sky high to left. Schubert tracking. He's at the wall and comes around another center fielder takes over. That's Earhart. And if Del Thomas set the plate for Florida. Thomas was 0 for 2 in the game last night, had a sacrifice. He leads the team in sacks and a snow cone right back to the mound to second for one. Too high! And they throw it away. Then we got interference and an extra base coming. Would have been an extra base getting into the dugout anyway, but Brigham and Thomas on a collision course. Ortiz's throw was just a bit high and put Brigham in harm's way. He had to go get it, and then Thomas sees it. He goes airborne, and, and when this throw goes high, Thomas starts to make the turn. He's going to go, and Brigham's a big dude, man. I mean, Thomas just tried to take a route that he would normally take to second base. At the end of the day, it really didn't matter because the ball went in the dugout. So, mm -hmm. what do you call interference or not? He's he's still going to end up at second base, which is where Thomas stands right now with two outs. Brigham had a bit of a yard sale. Yeah, there was big. Shades and hats. Oklahoma State has led the field in fielding percentage this weekend. That is, however, the tenth error of the season charged to Ortiz, the second baseman. Here's Brody Donay. 6 6 DH. Also catches when Caglione ends up on the mound. Sophomore from Lakeland, Florida, stroked to double to straightaway center. His first at bat last night, but then struck out in the final three. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Donay, who's four for 16 this weekend, two and one. Yeah. 
Got him swinging. Last two out of the strike zone is Donate. Over the last couple of weeks of the regular season in this tournament in the regional, they're averaging nine and third runs per game with Tyler Wolfert leading off the third. Senior from Farmington, New Mexico, out of Piedra Vista. That's a significant chunk of the season with a broken bone in his hand. The West Virginia series. Last year was the Big 12 Newcomer of the Week, second team off conference. Coming out of Midland Junior College. Just one for 13 this week with six strikeouts. Clemente's 3 1. What do you like about Jay Clemente so far? One green light. I like how, how aggressive, honestly, he's been with a fastball. There's times you get a freshman in his spot and they're trying to miss the bats right away. He ain't been worried about missing bats. He's been aggressive in the zone early. Strikes have been okay, but he, he's not trying to miss bats. And the fastball's played up. I mean, that was a 94. We've seen it as high as 96. I mean, Clemente goes into this situation knowing you're not going seven. Mm -hmm. If you go three or four, you've done your job. So honestly, just empty the tank as soon as you can. And when you run out, we'll run somebody else out there. Redshirted last year at Florida. This one's popped up in foul territory. Heyman and Thomas look. Dale Thomas calls for it. And there's one down with Lane Forsythe due up. Josh Holliday in Oklahoma State home for the third consecutive season for a regional. Nobody else can say that. They didn't get out of the previous two. Where are they as far as consecutive regionals? They've made it every year that Josh has been here. That's 12 right. in a row. They are behind the top five. Yeah. They're behind Florida and Vandy. Well, actually, the invert of those. Vandy number one. Pitches upstairs to Forsythe. You know what you call a group of Gators? Gaggle. I wasn't listening to you last night. Close. Forsyth was caught stealing to end the first. One two pitch. Clemente was a standout for a great high school program at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. They went 58 and 4 over two seasons, won back to back state championships in Florida. And the National High School Invitational Championship. Here's the 2 2. For Oklahoma State, fourth longest streak in the country behind Vandy, Florida, and LSU. Like I said, LSU. Who can forget the defending national champs? <laughs> Play for a regional title tonight against North Carolina. 2 2 pitch. Out to short, here's Colby Shelton. Two down. All right, so you haven't seen Oklahoma State this year. You haven't seen Carson Binge. You've been missing out because this guy does a little bit of everything for the Cowboys. Kid can do uh, whatever he wants in a baseball field. Plays in the outfield. I got a feeling if you want to put him in short, he's probably fine there. I want to catch him. He could probably figure that out on the mound. It's now the third starter for this Oklahoma State team closed for a while did the same thing last year. All around outstanding baseball player. Third year sophomore out of Yukon Oklahoma and it flies it high and deep to left field shot to the wall it is caught at the fence. 
And yeah, Mr. Baseball, it's just not country. And that includes a national championship. Michael Robertson, the nine hole hitter, looks at a first pitch strike. Hey, the sun is threatening to come out. It's comfy here today. It's great. We'll sit through a two hour, four minute lightning delay yesterday. That made it a long day at the ballpark for Florida, which had to win twice. Knocked off Nebraska to start the day. After getting through that delay, and then after some orange slices and Capri Suns, bounced back to beat Oklahoma State in the nightcap. One and two. Two home runs and 21 driven in for Robertson, who's delayed a great center field throughout the course of this season and really since he's been on campus. He maybe saved the game for Florida last night with a sliding catch in the fourth inning. I don't think that's an overstatement. Base is loaded, Schubert at the plate. Neely had just come into the game and struck out Binge for the second out, and then it was 108 off the bat to center field. Robertson laid out, ended the inning, and the Gators took it from there. Got him and also clipped Doherty. So hit batter puts Robertson on, and here's how he saved the day for Florida last night. A lot of guys out there, and they're all moving. And off the bat, it looked like this thing's going all the way to the wall. But Robertson with a great breakout in center field. And then this one. Lays out. He's fired up. Everybody else was. It'd be a three-run home run from Colby Shelton just a few innings later. But that one switched the momentum in the game because that gets to the wall. I think Oklahoma State runs away and hides. And the congregation of Gators four state game seven. Cade Curlin singled his first time up. Florida in last night's game was trying to manufacture some runs, play some small ball. Ashton Wilson had a couple of stolen bases and scrambled home from third. They tried to bunt some guys over and do some hit and run. And then the game turned on that great defense and like many games. In college baseball this year, and with these two teams, a three run home run. It came from Shelton in the sixth inning. Curling got the regional off, uh, started off with a bang against Nebraska and the Big Ten pitcher of the year, Brett Sears, a leadoff home run Friday afternoon. Aren't a whole lot of breaks in this Florida batting order. I mean, Molsky gets the sign. Robertson's a runner at first. Into center field. Earhart stepped in. Now he drifts back and has to make a jeté to haul it in. A what? He's French for jump. Come on. I don't We're think going to the ballet tonight. I don't think it is. Stillwater Ballet tickets available. Here's Jack Caglione. How would you describe Caglione to uh, somebody who hadn't seen him play? Um, <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, I would say if if you took an NFL tight end that was left handed and threw 97. <laughs> and so when you so watch him get in the box, you think maybe they made the box too small because okay. of how wide that he gets. I mean, that's on the fly. It's not a great description, but I'm going to go with it. So basically, what we're saying is uh, just merge Gronk and Sandy Koufax. Uh, Gronk facts. Yeah. And a left handed power hitter. Oh. Gronk facts bonds. 31 home runs, third most in the country. But with that, come fewer strikeouts than walks. He's only K 23 times this season. He's had a 30 game hit streak. He's riding a 45 game on base streak. It's not just fewer walks than 
or fewer strikeouts and walks. It's twice as many. He's walked 47 times. He struck out 23. He's got 31 home runs. How many guys in the country have more home runs than strikeouts? That's not an answer I expect you to get me, but if there's more than two, I'd be shocked. This is one of them. First team all SEC for the second straight season. He went, think about his his prodigious power, third in the country. He went 66 consecutive plate appearances without a K. It was basically entire month of April for him. In that month, he also had a nine game home run streak, which tied the all time NCAA record. And he also hit the farthest home run ever measured by StatCast, college or pro, including big leaguers. It was a 516 foot home run over the scoreboard at Florida's home park in a midweek game against Jacksonville. And he launches one into right center field. Binge on the run. It is off the top of the fence. It comes back in. They say it didn't leave the park. And the Gators have two on on a Caglione double who says, hold up. Didn't that leave? It, it it did everything but leave and they're definitely going to take a look at it right there. So this is what happens when he doesn't get all of it. That, that's that's what's crazy. This is a little bit off the end of the bat for Caglione. If he got all of it you, you don't need to worry about whether it hits the top of the wall. Or not. That's uh, a double. Yeah that just mushed the padding. Yeah that is a double. I mean it's an inch away from bouncing off the top. There aren't a whole lot of parks where it's easy to have fan interference. Here's the result. We'll keep him in the ballpark and Keglione at second with Robertson at third. But this wraparound concourse and great seating in both right and left field allows fans the opportunity. The rule is if you reach into the field to play, and ultimately that last one, I mean, if they really wanted to, they could have called it out. I don't think it was going to be caught in right field, but win is a double. Yeah. Ashton Wilson looks at a breaking ball for strike one. Well, Wilson has had a coming out party over the last couple of weeks. He was not in the mix on this Georgia team, uh, pardon me, this Florida team until the end of the regular season in the Georgia series. Came up with a couple of big hits then. Started their lone SEC tournament game and had a monster game here, game one, and he sends another flare into right field. That drops for a hit. It's going to bring one run home. Here's Caglione. He's across, and Florida leads 2-0. On an Ashton Wilson RBI single. All right, we were talking about it the other day. I already forgot his name. When we were doing Georgia Florida State, or the Georgia Regional Tim a few Beck. years ago. Becker, sorry. Tim, Tim Becker. Becker. So Tim Becker's a senior at Florida State. Nobody knows his name. He comes into the regional, it's a few home runs. He didn't have any the whole year. Throws Florida State on his back for the entire regional off they go. Ashton Wilson had four hits in the opener, three doubles and a home run. He was hitting sixth in that game. Coming into the game, he had four starts the whole season. Fast forward, they push him into the three slot. Yesterday gets three more hits. Today drives in the first two gator runs with that swing. Colby Shelton spoils well foul, nothing in one. If you're gonna lose a game in a regional and come back through it, or ultimately make a run of the postseason, it takes a few that haven't done it the entire year. There's no other way to do it. It's usually gonna take one or two on the mound and it takes somebody offensively. Well, that guy offensively so far has been Ashton Wilson. Colby Shelton is homer twice this week. Best power hitting shortstop in Florida history. And his three run home run last night turned the game around for Florida. I think your point about Wilson is well received, and it's not just that he's producing. It's that he's producing and then they put more on his shoulders by putting him in the three hole and he is answered. 
Well, and the other thing, and I'm not sure that he's quite reached this status, but in an ideal world, you want somebody behind Caglione, whoever it is, to where you feel like you can't just pitch around him every time. Um, he hit three hits yesterday. He literally manufactured his own run. He singled, he stole second. He advanced to third on a fly ball to center field that no one in their right mind should try to tag him, but he made it. And then scored on a ball in the dirt to get 15 feet away from home plate. That was the Gators' first run. That got that dugout going, and then Shelton changed things with one swing a few innings later. Shelton struck out swinging his first time up. Out of play to the left side. Do you think Kevin O'Sullivan? Feels like he's got to be aggressive on the pay base pass with Wilson again in this one and others. Uh, only if it's only if it's a gimme right now. Launch the right center field. Earhart back all the way at the track. Now the wall makes a catch. Wilson will advance to third. If today were Friday, Saturday, or Sunday in this regional, we would have seen four home runs. I think. Those flags are moving, and it's not nearly as warm and humid as it's been. And I, I think Shelton probably had that same feeling. I mean, yesterday was no doubt around the bullpen and right, but off the bat. And you come into this ballpark, and everybody tells you how much it flies. And so I think mentally you think, well, I can just miss it, and it's still got a chance to get out. That one didn't miss by much, but at least advances Wilson to third base. Came in at the plate. There's action in Oklahoma State pen. Evan O'Toole is now warming. Heyman drew a walk in the second to start the inning. Not just a piece, one and one. Came in the primary catcher. He'll move to first when Jack Caglione is on the mound. Replacing a reliable veteran in BT Ryapel who helped him make it to the College World Series finals last year. And he gets hit by a pitch. So runners at the corners with Tyler Shell not coming up. You can turn, you just can't turn into it. You didn't turn into it. That left arm was coming all the way back. Breaking ball that just kind of slipped out of Molsky's hand right there. There's action in that Oklahoma State bullpen. I, I got a feeling Molsky's got one more hitter at most right here. Especially the way Clemente has looked, and I, I know there's going to be pieces behind him, but it's got to be a short leash on both sides today. Shelna flew out to center field his first time up. Up a big Florida fan, about 45 minutes north of Gainesville. Played for the Gator Ball Baseball Academy growing up. 2018 5A Player of the Year at a Fort White High School in Lake City, Florida. Dory try to bring it back. Good take one on. Shellnut's hitting 60 points higher against righties this season than lefties. Heyman, not much of a threat, just one for one on the bases this year.
line right. It's probably the last look that you're going to get at Molsky right here. Maybe the thought was 3-1, let him pump a fastball, see if we can get one. Two on and two out for Florida. Here's the three one. Tyler Shelman. And he takes the strike. Comes one super regional ticket already today. Evansville will head to Knoxville to take on number one national seed Tennessee. Regional four seeds are 0 and 29 all time against the number one national seed. Swami, Slammy, Samsonite. We're saying there's a chance. Better on the move, pitches strike three on the outside corner. Apparently the, there's a lot of other people out there that have a better explanation for Caglion than I did. Are they working this game? Really good idea. No, okay. not. Some are working. Some hardly work, but they all have ideas right now. No one shoot it with a swing and a miss. Are any of their ideas worthy of mention you know what there, there was a Drago reference that probably could be mixed in there that, that I mean there's there's got to be a combo but you know, it's like a golden doodle to where you don't just need one or the other but Drago involved in that I, I, I think there's some validity to that Jack Caglione golden doodle with power hesitate to even play this game but how would you describe Nolan Schubert I think I'm gonna just tap out on this one fair enough. he is 6'5 233 he had a four home run game against Wichita State which set the Oklahoma State single game record it also tied a big 12 record Jacob Friday of Missouri in 08 the only other big 12 player they have four bombs in a game and Schubert loops this one to right field. That'll get down in front of Wilson. Leadoff single. It is the third time in four innings Oklahoma State has put the leadoff man on. Previous two stranded. He just doesn't miss the barrel very much, man. I mean, we've now seen him for four straight days. He doesn't look off balance. He may miss hit one, but everything just looks to be in balance. He had two home runs off of Cag Leon when he faced him, both on sliders. And they weren't cheap. I mean, they, they both left the stadium. This dude is a an elite hitter. I wouldn't be surprised with their size. The field just started tilting over towards first. Blown away. Cags. What do you guys talk about? <laughs> Major League scouting directors like punching their screen right now to figure out if there's a way they can get them both. Earhart doubled into left field his first time up. Comes from a baseball family. That Rodney played. Four seasons in the Yankees system. He was a college teammate, Tina Martinez, at the University of Tampa. Actually, out home Martino while they were there. Popped it up. And a high school teammate, his dad was, of Kenny Rogers. Didn't you say that you got Kenny Rogers to autograph a bat when you were in the big I league? I did. Yeah, he came to that song, The Greatest. Oh, which the, the, the other yesterday. Kenny Rogers. Yeah, no, well, yeah. I actually gave a hit up to the Kenny Rogers who played baseball, which not too many humans have done that, but I did. <laughs> he was a pitcher. Yeah. So people I wrote. gave him gave up a hit to him and he struck me out in the same game. Um, <laughs> but then the, the gambler, Kenny Rogers, I get to sign a bat. To third, smothered by Thomas. What a play in his second. And they get the lead runner. Schubert retired. So offensively, there's extra base hits, and they just innately tell you, okay, a double's better than a triple, or a triple's better than whatever. The, the home runs beat them all. It's not the same way defensively, and 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 you got to watch the game to figure out the ones that actually change the game. This changes the game. 
Robertson yesterday changed the game. If that goes down the line, if you're Oklahoma State, worst case scenario, you're second, third, nobody out. Instead, runner on first, one out, you're a ground ball away from getting away from it. That is a big time play. Thomas used every inch of his 5'10 frame to find that one. Caglione holds Earhart, who's got seven bags on the year. Aiden Miola at the plate. And a breaking ball in for a strike. A pretty good week for Miola. It should have perhaps been a second home run that was called back due to fan interference, ruled a double. It was that close. And the games these two have played against each other have been that close. Chase Earhart back. Aiden Miola been bothered by a hamstring injury, especially late in the season. He's a versatile defender. He's played a lot of different spots, and he yanks this one down the line. Extra bases ordered up for Aiden Miola. Earhart to third. They're going to wave him home as it got deep in the corner on Shellnut. The relay never comes, and Oklahoma State is on the board on Aiden Miola double. Seventh RBI of the season for Miola. And he just put it in the right spot. And there's if Shelma cuts this thing off, he, you definitely keep gonna keep the runner from scoring right here. And you can see a little peak right there. Now we're gonna peak one more time, then put your head down and go. When it gets to the wall, it chain link fence out there kind of deadens it, doesn't come off of it. Shelma gets it in a little bit late. Warhart comes around to score, and the Cowboys are within one. A good week to be number two. Miola five for seven with a home run and five ribbies in this region. Here's Ian Doherty, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Miola had last night off. They didn't need a DH with Carson Binge pitching. One ball, one strike. For Clemente, this now the longest outing of his career. Before it was three innings against Vanderbilt. Now he's gone three and a third, and that outing against Vanderbilt went 57 pitches. Now I've gone over that as well, and I think that's why right now, if you're Kevin O'Sullivan, especially with the fact that you've got traffic out there, it, it now becomes a very short leash for Clemente. Here's the 2 1 to Ian Doherty. Foul straight back. He's held velocity. That's that's for sure. So that part isn't ticking down at all. But he's he's in uncharted territory as far as his collegiate career goes right now. There are three lefties at the top of this order for Oklahoma State and Brighaman in the seven hole. And they've got a lefty getting loose. And Frank Menendez in the Florida bullpen. 95 mile an hour fastball miss. Full count to Ian Doherty. Yeah. Upstairs. Two on for Oklahoma State. With only one out. Lefty do up and a lefty loose in the pen. Yeah, I think you go get him right now. Brigham hit 60 points less against lefties, 222 versus 284, and Kevin O'Sullivan out to the mound. And even though you're getting him in the fourth inning, if you're Kevin O'Sullivan, you are very pleased with what the freshman gave you today. 16th. That was the Georgia series. He worked an inning and two thirds in their lone loss against the Bulldogs that closed the regular season. And the first pitch is lifted to the right side. Got him out in front of it. Ashton Wilson makes the catch. One down. Excuse me, two down. Still no 
many innings do you think they'll ask him Menendez? I mean, I think in an ideal world, you probably wanted Menendez to come in and go left left. Mm -hmm. um, if you bring him in here, if he gets you anything more than three outs, three outs, that's a plus. If he just gets you out of this inning and it's 2 1, you'll take it. Here's Avery Ortiz. They could keep consideration for him sticking around for the next inning and facing the lefties at the top of the order. Horseside Benz and Schubert. Three lefties in a row, no break. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Down the right side, headed foul and out of play into the bleachers. Ortiz sends it to left. Tyler Shellnut puts it away, and the Oklahoma State got run across. They'd nice enough to join us. Josh, where do you stand with your pitching at this point? What do you think of Molsky's performance? Well, he certainly made a big pitch to uh, get out of the jam in the last inning, but uh, he's been an awfully good uh, three, four, five inning guy. Probably three, four is his comfort, and uh, Evan hopefully right here will come in and get us a couple ground balls, and then we'll, uh, as you guys know, you get to this particular game in the tournament. Uh, they're not holding anybody back, so uh, Kranz, who's been our closer, he's he'll be uh, he'll be on early call today as well. Okay, so to that point, I mean, you're playing a one-game series, which is different than what a lot of the regular season is. How do you handle it differently because of that? Yeah, it's it's a bit unique because you certainly you know you're plotting yourself out throughout the year, as you mentioned, and so much of uh, where you're at each weekend is how you've used guys days leading up to and the sequence that you're in. But you got to throw all out the window now. Um, you got to win these pitches one at a time from the fourth inning on in a two to one game. So you definitely have to modify your strategy. I don't think there's any, any doubt about that. Josh, thanks for time. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Josh. Thank you. 12 season as a head man here, made the tournament each and every year. And by the way, when they made it to the College World Series under Josh Holiday, they had to go through Clemson, South Carolina to do just that. They won the regional there. They stayed in the Palmetto State, drove down to Columbia, and knocked off South Carolina in the Super. Here's Evan O'Toole, senior from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. Face the bottom third of the order for Florida, starting with Dale Thomas. O'Toole threw four innings in the first game this weekend on Friday night for Oklahoma State against Niagara. And a first pitch strike. Through the hole on the right side, Dale Thomas places it perfectly. What a big play for the Florida third baseman, leadoff man on. In the first game of this tournament, Oklahoma State beat Niagara 19 to 7. Sam Garcia, their number one starter, only lasted three and two thirds. And Bogus gave him an inning and a third, and then O'Toole was able to clean things up and hold Niagara scoreless the rest of the way. Runner aboard for Brody Donay. Donay struck out swinging to close the second. One ball, one strike. Down, two and one.
Cowboys dealing from a deficit. They're trying to avoid becoming the fifth school to be eliminated as a regional host in three straight seasons. Most recently, Clemson, 16 through 18. Also happened to Georgia Tech. Mississippi State in the late 80s, 87 to 89, and mid-80s Florida State. Two and two. Cowboys have been eliminated each of the last two seasons here in their home park. LSU basketball coach Dale Brown famously blew like a 35 point second half lead on the road to Kentucky. And he said, "What? Well, we don't get credit for being up 35? <laughs> They're good Didn't enough you to see host the for the beginning part. <laughs> yeah. He's changing channels. said good enough to host for three consecutive seasons. The only team currently with a run like that. Donay strikes out looking. There's one down with a runner on. It's a super regional coverage continues Friday. ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, and ESPN Plus. You find all those game times and broadcast information on NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here's Michael Robertson. For many years, that read was 88 NCAA championships. We've been in no longer. The final two are. You remember? Beach volleyball, mm -hmm. Division three men's volleyball. You said it was such good right. evidence. Is that right? It's right. Good. I thought. Can you just you confirm it's right? You're right. Please? You nailed it. You Thank nailed you. it. All right. Croquet is next. Will hit run on right there. Kind of thought we'd see more of that from the Gators throughout this tournament. It's it's really based on whether you get a strike throw on the mound and, and you think you're going to get one right there. But 1-0 count. You could definitely tell Robertson was trying to take that the other way. They got the movement they wanted, which you would expect based on defensively what the lineup is. But Forsyth was covering, created more room on the left side, but Robertson just a little bit late. Robertson was hit by pitches last time. Huh? All right, they tried it 1 0. Do you do it again 2 1? You throw over if you're O'Toole? I would once. You got a little buckle over there. And it's one of the things you're looking for. You got to be a riverboat gambler to pitch out 2 1, but. At first movement right there. Look like Thomas may be leaning. Doherty's been really good behind the plate. Chuck Geralman putting on the signs for Florida and the first base dugout. Mike Rivera and Del Thomas looking on. And that definitely is not a lead if you're going to straight steal. He's not off there very far. Swing and a miss Ooh, and still worked. So there's two things with a hit and run. One, obviously, you want to make contact the left side, but the other thing a swing does is it, it just it keeps the catcher back enough to where they can't go get it quite as much. So even though Robertson swings and misses, it creates a little bit of a smoke screen for Doherty behind home plate. And the minute he can't field it cleanly, which he couldn't, couldn't catch it, then it's an easy stolen base for Dale Thomas. And this one's sent into the stands on the left side. Free baseball? That youngster. 
really interesting to see Florida attempting to manufacture runs. They did the same thing in last night's game before the three run home run for a team that's top 10 in the country in the long ball. I think it depends on where they're on the lineup, right? I mean, you get Robertson in the nine hole that you think can control the bat enough. He's only got two home runs this year. To the left side, that's fair. Thomas around third. They're going to wave him. Here's the throw from Schubert. It's late. And Florida adds another. It's a three to one Gator lead. That backside ground ball works to perfection right there. Robertson, who was already thinking left side when they were putting a hit and run on this time, does the exact same thing and just shaded enough towards second base, gets past Wolford. Taylor Black wasn't quite sure what he was going to do over at third base right here, by the way. He was going down the line, and, and Nolan Schubert got to it in a hurry in left field. Ultimately, Dale Thomas just put his head down, kept going, and it was the right decision. So top of the order now, Cade Curlin, who is one for two. And a bloop single his first time up. You can see the freeze, which you got to do right there, see to get doubled off. And well, it worked. <laughs> that's, that's what you got to say about it, huh? Yeah, it worked. Robertson, four for four. Curlin has found his power stroke, three home runs in the final two games at Georgia. And the Gators needed to win both just to make it to the tournament. And the attempt to stay above 500, they had to tread some water late in the season. One and done in Hoover at the SEC tournament. Sharply hit to Forsyth that's short to Ortiz and a 6 4 3 double play. The Gainesville Regional one and one and one on an eight game win streak. Here's Tanner Wolford to lead off. Wolford is one for 14 this week. Pulls it foul. Was a standout at Midland Junior College for two seasons, 21 and 22. And didn't have a great Big 12 tournament either. He's just four for 31 in the postseason. Schubert right around the corner. You'd like to face Bench with nobody on base. Line into center field over is Robertson. He won't lay out for it. And a leadoff single. And Oklahoma State has set the table for Lane Forsythe, Carson Bid, and Noah Schubert. Well, Robertson has made a few great plays out in center field, but this time just shifted a little bit too far to the pull side, which makes sense. You're going to get more fly balls in the outfield there. If he's straight up, but maybe push a little bit to the opposite side, he's got a chance to make that play. Instead, too far to go. Good decision. Two run lead in the fifth inning. Keep it in front. Hold Wolford to a single. The Pokes with the leadoff man on for the fourth time in five innings. Despite the hot starts, Gators have been pitching out of these jams. One of those leadoff men have come around to score. And the Mississippi State Bulldog Lane Forsythe at the plate. He's in the College World Series team his freshman year. He won the national championship in 2021. Made 58 starts for Chris Lamonis' squad that year. Yeah. 2-0. That K 
Caglione, Kevin O'Sullivan, Luke Heyman coming out to have a word with Menendez. This is the first of a trio of lefties at the top of the order. Kevin O'Sullivan strikes me as a coach who worries less about handedness or analytics and more about trust when it comes to his pitchers. Saw it yesterday, right? I mean, he brought Brent, uh, Neely in in the fourth inning. When ultimately, I think in his mind and in the Florida Gators' mind, whenever you bring Neely in, it's his game. Well, it was his game, and he finished it from there. He gave up one hit. I would agree. That I think I think there's a feel component, but there's also a confidence component as to who you're going to go with. Talk to Brandon Neely after his dynamic performance last night. He said, "Well, I told Kevin O'Sullivan he's not getting the ball back. He didn't want it back. <laughs> he got what he wanted to see." McNeely and Jamison both right-handers up and working in that Gator bullpen. After the visit, the two all. Just off the plate, three and all. The next two hitters have 41 home runs combined. Three and one. Florida has been a good fielding team over the course of the season. Top 15 in the country, but not a great double play squad. One of the reasons is the strikeout rate is so high, 10 and a half Ks per nine. That's in the dirt, ball four. And it brings Carson Bench to the plate. So back to your comment just a minute ago. In an ideal world, you want left on left to binge and shoot it. But are your eyes telling you differently right now? And, and that's the decision that Kevin O'Sullivan's going to make right now. It looks like for now, he will stay with Menendez. And he delivers a first pitch strike to Carson Binge. Oddly enough for Frank Menendez, lefties have as many hits against him in righties and fewer at bats. Up the middle, off the glove, Shelton has to redirect and has no play, and the Cowboys have loaded the bases in the fifth with nobody out. It, the game just does strange things to you sometimes. Just a right-handed hitter it's a, or a right-handed pitcher, it's probably a double play. Because Shelton is pinched up the middle, but with a left-handed pitcher, the glove on that side, I don't know. I don't know if he gets there. That might get through anyway. If Shelton gets to it, it's absolutely a double play because it's hit that hard. Instead, off the glove of Menendez, and now we got traffic. Bases loaded, nobody out for one of the best hitters in the country. Nolan Schuber, 5 for 11 with the bases loaded this year. Low and away. He has homered three times in this regional. Got underneath it and behind the plate for Heyman. Monster out, recorded by Menendez, retiring the hottest hitter wow. in the game. That's the second time today that Schubert has popped out to the catcher. The other time he hit a missile. That's uh, that's about as big an exhale as you can possibly have. Now the work's not done if you're Florida, but if you're Oklahoma State, you had the ideal situation. You got bases loaded, nobody out with one of the best power hitters in the country. Well, the good news is you got a guy behind him that could do some damage too. Zach Earhart, first team, all Big 12. Bases loaded. 1-0. He is 3-for-7 with the bases loaded this year. He's having a great regional. 
He's already homered against Florida once. Two and all. Earhart turned down the Red Sox. They used their 13th round selection on him coming out of high school in 21. Oh, at the end of the bat. 2 0 changeup right there from Menendez. See if you go back to back right there after getting that swing. Earhart was a 400 hitter in conference play in the Big 12 this year. Menendez shook. Finds the pitch that he likes. Here's the 2 1. Thank you. is loaded and it's full go beyond the move base is loaded for Oklahoma State Tyler pardon me one down Tyler Wolford is a runner at third Lane Forsythe at second after a walk and Carson Ben single and it's lifted to left field shell not into the corner looking to tag from third is Wolford and he will scramble home in a sack fly from Zach Earhart we got a one run game again. Dale Thomas thought he left early I believe. He is hollering at Menendez and I believe they're going to try to appeal this. Thomas steps on the bag and it's denied by Linus Baker. Two down and Aiden Miola coming up. He's got an RBI double. Did you think Wolford left early? Uh, honestly, I was watching the play left. I was not watching the base runner. Who was asking for it? Shelnut or Thomas? Thomas. Be surprised if he did because it's so deep, you know, you're going to score anyway. This should be the best look. Smart to throw this ball to third base, too. Sometimes your ego gets a little bit too much of it. I think that was okay. Well, this is going to be the last hitter for Menendez, whether he gets him out or not. He can figure out a way to get out of bases loaded. Nobody out and only give up one run. You'll take it. 2 0 pitch. Oh. foul. Gator scored two in the third. Oklahoma State answered with one in the fourth. Florida one more in the fourth and now. A run already in here in the fifth with two on, and we got time called. The ball came out of the uh, stands. Good hustle. Forsyth, the runner at second, bench is at first. In, in what are hitter plus counts. 3 1 change up right there to, to get it back to 3 2. Big pitch right here because they will be moving. Here's a payoff. Swing and a miss. Miola goes down swinging the Gators. Hold Oklahoma State to just shape up at this point. What do you think of Menendez finishing that off? I think we, we've gotten it as much as you know as we probably would have expected out of uh, Jake and uh, and Frankie. Um, 
obviously we we pitched with a bunch of traffic uh, on uh, on the bases today, but uh, they made some big pitches when they needed to. I think the bat with uh, Earhart, um, they were the bases loaded with shoes to keep him in the yard, and um, and Frankie threw some really good changeups, and um, and I think he's sitting close to 500 versus lefties. But we got to get some mileage out of him. Because we, uh, you know, we got Fisher Jamison down there, with, who we we used quite a bit, and we got McNeely down there. So, um, but that was that was that was that was the beginning for him to get out of it. So I asked Josh the same thing. I'm going to ask you the same thing here. Um, one game series. How, how does that change the way that you operate in this game, as opposed to the way that you would call it a normal three game series on a Sunday? Well, I think I think from a pitching perspective, when you're earlier in the year, you try to let guys work through. You know some difficult situations to hope they learn from them now it's you know you got to have a little bit more of a, a quicker trigger so to speak so you know there's a little a, a bit more urgency obviously but you know throughout the year you try to give guys some opportunities and maybe work through situations a little bit more than obviously a one game series like it is today. All right Sully thanks for your time we appreciate thanks, it. Thanks guys. They're not going to give Caglione anything to hit. He's in the count three and oh. You left a descriptor out of the combo with the Drago comparison for Caglione. It was Drago plus Rocky. That's it. Yeah, that's that's a good combo. Yeah. Four pitch walk and lead off man on. Unintentional, intentional walk. And that'll bring Ashton Wilson. On. Now you've said this before, but the necessity to have a hitter or a player like Ashton Wilson come into his own in the big moments and in a big tournament when he hasn't shown it over the course of this season is sometimes what you need to have success in the postseason. But you, you don't really know who it's going to be but the great runs in the postseason always has something like this. It's a name or an arm and sometimes it's both. Um, that hasn't happened during the regular season and, and something changes when they get in the postseason. And then you ride it for as long as it goes. I mean, this is just in this regional for Wilson. And the cool thing is, and this is just sports in general, like it doesn't matter what happened during the, the regular season. He thinks he's pretty good right now. And, and the guys wearing blue think he's pretty good right now, too. And that's about all that matters. Whatever happened up to this point makes no difference. He's got nine hits in this regional. He had six in the regular season. Go to Jordan of uh, Mississippi State had more along with East Carolina's Ron McChrystal. And double play turn. Smooth by Kobe Shelton at short. Excuse me, by Lane Forsyth at short. Two down. Second double play is a mini innings for Oklahoma State. And he just snuck one in on his hands too and it's at a perfect spot. Forsyth knows he has to take this one on his own and his just kind of understanding of of an internal clock and a base runner is so good doesn't have to fire it over it takes plenty of time and make sure that he finishes off the double play. So that'll be the end of the line for Evan O'Toole. And Oklahoma State with two outs in the fifth and Colby Shelton coming to the plate will go right back to the bullpen. Simply in there to face Colby Shelton and Oklahoma State will go back to that bullpen. Shelton's homer 20 times this season and he lifts this one to shallow left. Schubert was playing deep and he comes in but can't finish. Shelton on his way to second. Danger zone between Forsyth and Schubert. Schubert is a is a big time hitter, man. He's as good a left-handed hitter as there is in the country, but he is not a great defender in left field. And this one, he had to go a ways, and then just kind of bad baseball luck. I mean, you slide trying to make a play, it goes off his body, and Colby Shelton's got everything out in front of him. So you're on to get the lefty. Gets a swing that you would want right there, just doesn't, excuse me, behind it. And the first pitch, that curveball, nothing in one. Grant's last pitch in the Big 12 tournament threw 30 pitches against Oklahoma on May 25th. 
That was a two inning stint. And a season high four inning stint against Cincinnati in mid April. Coincided with his longest outing from a pitch count perspective. He threw 64. One and two. So this would be a similar situation to Florida when they brought Neely in yesterday. Mm -hmm. If you're Oklahoma State, you're bringing Krantz in here. The intent is, all right, everybody else in the bullpen, you can put your turfs on because this is a dude we want to finish. Heyman pops it up left side, four side back. Here's Schubert coming in behind him, and Schubert handles that one. The double play to start things. Big help. Um, it's it's just going to magically get worse as the game goes on. Not a great sign for the Gators. Now you got to just see how Shelton moves, or excuse me, how Shelton moves out at shortstop. Aiden Miola leads off the six. Menendez still in the game. Popped it up in foul territory. Caglio fighting the sun. And puts it away. One down. The Beavers of Oregon State have advanced out of the Corvallis Regional. They had a rain delay last night. And this will finish off an 11 to 6 win. Kate Kendall pops up the short. And the Beavers. Be the second team from Oregon to advance to the Super Regional. They head to Lexington to take on the Kentucky Wildcats. The two out of the pack still standing. Last year, the Pac 12 and Oregon and Oregon State both make their way to a Super. Here's Ian Doherty. He struck out swinging. Andrew Walk got tied up on that. Um, by the way, staying with shortstop Colby Shelton, he's the only player. Who has played short for Florida this season? Yeah. Or started it short. At least. Yeah, that's. I mean, he moves out, and those other guys that can't get me wrong, but um, he moves out of there, and that that just that becomes a look that the Gators haven't seen defensively the whole year. Tom Brigman is over two. Pop up. Catcher to pop up a run. Little dribbler, Shelton gathers and got it. I'll tell you this, I didn't think Menendez would go back out. I thought maybe you got as much as you could get out of him, and, and Kevin O'Sullivan obviously thought different. He's now got you two quick outs here in the six. I mean, you're kind of counting backwards here from the end. How much can McNeely give us? How much can Jamison give us? Because they don't want to go beyond those two. That, that's the way they would like to finish this after Menendez. Avery Ortiz yanks a foul. It's now two outs closer to that number. Nothing in two. Ortiz four for 14 this regional and the pitch low for Menendez one and two. Had to deal with some injuries late in the season, including working collarbone of catcher Tanner Garrison. Ty Evans out with a wrist injury. That was what opened the door for Ashton Wilson. Yeah. That's 
Stairs ball four. Two out walk. to do anything they can that Oklahoma State dugout. Brian Holiday. I don't know if that means he hit or missed right there, but worked out well for the Cowboys. Menendez done after a season high of pitches. He threw 47 of them. Gators to the bullpen for the second time, clinging to a one-run lead in the top of the sixth and seventh. Ortiz the runner at first. <laughs> Wolford a New Mexico native. Fly ball to right field and deep. Wilson. And Ortiz went halfway because it's a third. Florida holds on and wins this game. But Cowboy coaching staff is going to look back and say, man, we probably left one or two of them out there, especially with who you had coming up in the lineup. You had the ideal situation. Josh Holliday's team didn't have a hit with runners in scoring position last night. <laughs> Oklahoma State stranded 11 runners in Florida's 5 2 victory in game number six, and they were 0 for 7. With runners in scoring position. And Holiday after the game said, when you get guys on base, you've got to finish the job. Didn't think they had discipline on certain pitches and certain spots to capitalize. Finished by saying those are turning points in games every single time. Already tried to bring it back. One and two. On the right side, long run for Binge and puts on the Jets, but can't quite get there. But he looked uncertain as to the kind of held up. Yeah, yeah. He, he held up just a little bit, and just his pure speed makes up for it at the end. He still had a chance to make the play, but he didn't pull up, but he did slow a little bit on the path. And then right there, kicks it in and thinks maybe he's got a chance. Shellnut struck out looking to end the third with two in scoring position. Florida's looking to win a road regional for the third time in program history. They won the Oklahoma City Regional in 04 and OU hosted. And the East Regional in Tallahassee in 88. His 14th home run of the season, 432 feet and into the parking lot. <laughs> 93 mile an hour elevated fastball right there, and Tyler Shelnut did not miss it. 432. And Nolan Schubert out in left field didn't even turn around. This is one off the bat that you know is going out, just not sure how far out it's going to go. You know what it cleared? Uh, everything? The catwalk. It did, the yeah. catwalk. Yeah, the catwalk. On the catwalk. It cleared and did a little turn on the catwalk on the way by and just kept on going into the parking lot in left field. For Shellnut, 14th of the year and extends the Gator lead. I, so th this is early. I know he hadn't been in very long. Kranz's stuff doesn't look crisp. For a guy that's got significantly more strikeouts and in innings this year, it, it's not coming out of his hand the way that, that I think he would expect it to right now. Could it be that he hasn't thrown since the 25th? Potentially. I mean, I'm sure he got working in between now and then, but this is the guy that Oklahoma State needs to hold Florida down. He may not need to finish. They'd like him to. 
but it, this is this is their best option. It's only the fifth home run he's allowed all season in about 47 innings of work. The bullpen will spring to life for the pokes. Three and one. Well, Thomas has had a good game for Florida. Got a hit and scored a run last time up. And sends this one a mile high for Ortiz or Forsyth. The shortstop will take over. One down. And here's Brody Donay. That brings us to 24 home runs in this region. One behind the 25 hit in favor. For the second most in any region. Yeah. In for a strike. Strike to Brody Donay. Mentioned the last time the Florida won a road regional was down the road in Oklahoma City in 2004. The Sooners hosted, but the Gators came in as the one seed. They beat UCLA in the regional final that year. Top of the zone, two and two. Kevin O'Sullivan's team was just barely eligible to make it to the postseason. You got to be above 500 to be considered. This one skied foul territory from Wolford and Doherty, and that's onto the dugout route. Struck out twice in this game. He went down swinging to close the second and looking in the fourth. Saw in his eyes what he thought was a fastball, and you can see that top half just turned enough. And then there's not enough time to get the hands going. Four strikeouts, excuse me, five strikeouts for the Gators today. Donay has three of them. And for a strike to Michael Robertson. They started with Oregon State winning the Corvallis Regional, and so for the first time, Oregon and Oregon State advanced to a suit in the same year. And to be fair, Oregon didn't have a team for how many seasons? 27? Good enough. Up the middle. Flag down by Forsyth. And that'll close the six. The Kyle Peterson. Certainly could host as a two seed based on what happened opposite that Chapel Hill Regional in Tucson. And Forsyth looks at a first pitch strike, nothing in one. To short, Shelton gets cut off by Thomas. Good job, Ben. Good job, Ben. Nice team at out, huh? Yeah, I mean, what we saw Shelton was limping just a minute ago. That hamstring's barking for sure. And, and you always want your third baseman to take it if he can, even more so right now. 
the less that Shelton has to do defensively or offensively right now is beneficial to the Gators if they can move on. That's the first step right here. High first hop, Dale Thomas takes a really direct route too, and then has got plenty of time to throw it across. Here's Carson Binge. Is that impact Dale Thomas' positioning pre-pitch, or is he just going to be a little bit more aggressive to his gloves? No, I don't, I don't think you can move pre-pitch. I think you got to play what the scouting report says. But there may be times that you would give way to your shortstop that today you're probably not going to do it right now. Binge banged one up the middle for a base hit his last time up, went off the pitcher, and pulls that one foul. Tommy John surgery, his freshman year, first team all conference last year, and a John Olu two way player award semifinalist. And a lurch sends that one to the backstop. Oh, beautiful as a prairie meadow out there today. The sun is shining. Slight breeze. Ooh, pure crystal strikeout. You can spot right there for Jamison. Dot the fastball on the inside part of the plate. Binge was very aggressive very early, and then Jamison kind of took advantage of it and then locked him up. You can execute that when you see the movement of the hands. You've got him right there. Two quick outs here in the seventh. For Fisher Jamison. Nolan Schubert at the plate. And a first pitch strike. Nothing and two quick leader Schubert. Richard Jamison going to work. And looking like Billy Bob Rocket out there. Now it's straight back. Cowboys looking for some day money. They played under the lights all weekend. Swing and a miss for Schubert. Back to back K's, Jameson. He had a one, two, three inning with one of the best parts of this Oklahoma State lineup. He's track out big one of them. Now you're counting outs, and there's only six more with a two run lead. Top of the order for Florida. This is Cade Curlin. Maryland's got three hits in this tournament, including a home run. This is Florida's fifth game this week. One and two. Started with the win against Nebraska Friday, lost to Oklahoma State Saturday, had to play two yesterday, knocked off Nebraska while sitting through a two hour lightning delay, and then Send us the game seven with a win over Oklahoma State. That one's over the clubhouse. Nice digs I got here, huh? This ain't bad. Well, they uh, they did just about everything right here at O'Bright. Kranz has faced five batters. He's allowed a home run and he's struck out one. Struck out one. To short. Foresight. One down with Chad Leon coming up. NBA Finals start Thursday night, 8 30 Eastern, 5 30 Pacific on ABC with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and the Celtics taking on Luka, Kyrie, and the Mavs.
a coverage tips with NBA countdown 8 Eastern 5 Pacific. Al Horford still playing looking for his first NBA title in 16 seasons in the league. Here's Caglione. You asked earlier this game about Caglione's home run total relative to his strikeout. Total. There are 583 Division One players with at least 10 home runs this year. Only two have more homers than strikeouts. This guy at the plate and Cameron Cisneros of ETSU, 23 home runs and 20 Ks. So we were right. Yeah, you nailed it. Maybe there's two. Thank you, Jerry. I didn't Mills. know that there would be two. Yeah, good work, Melzen. The average power combination for both Jack Heglione and Charlie Condon is just next level. Aguilon came in seventh in the country in batting average. A little dribbler against the ship. And that's going to go down as a line drive in the book. He hit a 119 mile an hour home run yesterday. And he comes up with a 34 mile an hour single today. Uh, he actually gets down a line pretty well, too. He runs a lot better than you think. And that counts. He knows right away the minute you peek. Now that Wolford was pushed all the way to about the shortstop. In fact, I mean, he even pinched up the middle for a shortstop. He knew right away. Just go over field this thing because that's a sink. Here's Ashton Wilson. First year as a Gator. College of Charleston last year. Or excuse me, Charleston Southern last year. from Orlando. Went to Charleston Southern and made 36 starts as a freshman. Moves pretty well for a big guy, huh? He moves very well for a big guy. And he moves great around first base. That's that's the biggest thing you want to see. If he runs great, that's just one more positive. But two balls, two strikes. I mean, you could put him in the outfield if you want to, but I think you're wasting how good he is defensively at first base. What did you think of Pete Alonso coming out? Um, well, I mean, the power was next level power. Pete was not a good defender at first base in college. He's turned himself into a, a much better defender since he's gotten into pro ball in the big leagues. Alonzo made it to the big leagues of the Mets. He had 52 home runs his rookie year. Hey, you had 52 home runs. You don't have to be the greatest defense at first base, but you're going to play every day. <laughs> on the ladder, on Ashley Wilson. Couldn't find 94. Second so strikeout for Kranz. Kranz does a really good job of this. I mean, he, he knows where his stuff plays. Now, fastball plays at the top of the zone, and 
He's just daring you not to swing at it. You're not going to get to it. If you pull the hands, if the hands start on that one, you're not going to make contact. He'll strike out right there for Cran, second since he's come to the game. Here's Colby Shelton. Who double his last time up. I would say there are strict instructions right now to Shelton that I, I don't care what happens, you're not running hard. Of course. Grant spent two seasons as a shocker at Wichita State. Probably don't even want him to swing hard. He didn't listen to him. No. Le left hamstring, right? Is what we thought. Came around third. Yeah, it looked like it. Maybe Shelton's just thinking if I run into one, I don't have to run hard. I can promise you is what he's thinking right now. I know the easiest way to not run hard hit it in the bullpen again. That's what he did last night. 388 foot shot a three run home run. And Florida one by three over Oklahoma State to force this game seven. Pitch to Shelton. Rounded to first. He's going a little bit. Yeah, he's going a little bit quicker than thought. It's a good sign. Bill Sullivan, a former Clemson assistant, I'm sure he's been back since. Says, watch out for the bunt uh, to Earhart. In a first pitch curveball in for a strike. Zach Earhart drove in one of the sack fly in the fifth. Pretty good as assistant staff for Jack Leggett back in the day. Kevin O'Sullivan, <laughs> Eric Backage, and Tim Corbin. Worked out okay for all those guys. <laughs> One and two. Coaching news, South Carolina has opened up. That was officially announced today. I think expected by many. Back-to-back -back national champions, 2010 and 11. Three straight strikeouts now for Fisher Jamison. Fisher Jamison just struck out one of the most dangerous two, three, four lineups in the entire country. They got two of them looking. Got Benj looking. Got Schubert swinging, and this time just fooled Earhart. He's looking slider, and some of that is because of what the book is. Jamison, over the course of the year, throws a ton of sliders. That time locked him up with a fastball. That was a pretty good pitch there. Certainly looked like it. Here's Miola, who doubled home a run in the fourth. One on one. Miola struck out with two on in the fifth. Oklahoma State looking for its sixth super regional appearance. Florida looking for its third road regional win all time. First since coming to the Sooner State in 04 as the one seed. that long ago that one seeds traveled on a semi regular basis. No which never made any sense. In a shadow center Robertson coming on. Two down. This is empty Ian Doherty stands in so it's not just the coaching carousel that's on the move but the transfer portal is humming right now. I think the last I heard was 1300 in the portal today. I think there was 800 that went in today. Yeah. Oklahoma State's just a little out of sorts right now at the plate. 
swinging at balls and taking strikes and that that's that's not what this offense has been the whole year they're, they're starting to feel what the scoreboard says right now. Remember Florida is the home team on the scoreboard. O2 pitch. Little foul. To the right side and Curlin. And Fisher Jamison is trying to pull his best Brandon Neely. He is perfect. Knocked off Oklahoma 9-3 in the women's college world series. An elimination game of the trip to the finals on the line. Florida athletic director Scott Strickland able to come to both sites this week with baseball team so close. There's Luke Heyman. He is 0 for 1. He's walked and hit by a pitch. Lifted to center field. Zach Earhart shades on. One out. Peeking ahead of the Oklahoma State half of the ninth they are the visiting team on the scoreboard they'll bat first it's the bottom third of the order Brigham Ortiz and Wolford do up <laughs> Tyler Shell at Homer does last time up Insurance run, nothing in one. <laughs> to third, backhanded pickup from a knee by Wolford. Strong throw, and Brigham kept his foot on the back. Two down. Tell you this, Robert Krantz has done his job, man. He gave the solo home run up, but after that, he's he's been tight. Gave up just one single after. He's held Oklahoma State in there and given him a chance. So here's Dale Thomas. The biggest mark against Florida coming into the postseason and really going into Selection Monday. Was its overall record in a byproduct of their midweek struggles. This was not a good midweek team because they didn't get good midweek pitching because they threw nine freshmen. And those freshmen now have a little bit more experience. Yeah. Number two. First two guys in this game. Thomas one and two. The freshman got him 17 outs today. Since then it's been Fisher James. Two and two. Him up shallow right binge sets up camp puts it away two, three, three, five, three. count of Brigham at the plate and the first pitch misses the low to the seven hole hitter who is 0 for three in two regional final games against Oklahoma State Florida pitching has been untouchable Oklahoma State has 11 hits, 21 strikeouts, and only three runs. Two balls and no strikes to Brigham. Jamison delivers a strike. 
And Columbus State could have just yelled take right there. <laughs> if you're calling timeout 2-0, ask him to step out. There's only one sign. Swings and sends it to right. And the Gators two outs away from advancing to the Super Regional at Clemson. Well, if you're the Cowboys, I, I think at this point it's just get us to bench. Just get us to bench and give us a chance with those guys coming to the plate that it would take two getting on this inning to get to that dangerous 2-3-4. We'll get a pinch hitter for the Cowboys. This is hitting Ortiz's spot. We'll see Colin Ritchie. Ritchie started in right field last night, was over two with a couple of strikeouts. Florida and those numbers of pitching is put up against Oklahoma State and the two regional final games this overall has not been a strength of this team this year which is odd to say it is the highest ERA under Kevin O'Sullivan came in today 6 2 0 nothing in two now to Colin Ritchie Strikes. Well, it's an Oklahoma State offense that scored 19 runs in the opener of this regional against Niagara. Seven the first time they played this Florida Gators team that got them to two and up. In that first meeting, they had five home runs. They scored two yesterday, now two today on five hits. Full count to Richie. And Reeves will bring the time around to the plate. There's a 36th pitch from Jamison. Popped up center field. Robertson drifting back. And the Gators are one out away from a road regional win at Oklahoma State. is one for three in this game. First pitch strike. Florida's trying to become the first team to hold a three opponents of two or fewer runs in this year's regional round. Battle third, nothing and two. <laughs> Upstairs, there have been three other teams that enter a super regional with 27 losses. South Florida in 21, Houston in 2003, and four seed Fresno State in 08 that went on to win it all. Swing and a miss. Gators do it. They go on the road and take two from Oklahoma State and will head to Clemson for a super regional appearance.
excuse me, behind it. And the first pitch set curveball, nothing in one. Grant's last pitch in the Big 12 tournament through 30 pitches against Oklahoma on May 25th. It was a two inning stint. And a season high four inning stint against Cincinnati in mid April. Coincided with his longest outing from a pitch count perspective. He threw 64. One and two. So this would be a similar situation to Florida when they brought Neely in yesterday. Mm -hmm. If you're Oklahoma State, you're bringing Krantz in here. The intent is, all right, everybody else in the bullpen, you can put your turfs on because this is a dude we want to finish. Heyman pops it up left side, four side back. Here's Schubert coming in behind him, and Schubert handles that. One. The double play to start things. Big help.